Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to Octopus Deploy 2018.3. I'm very excited to share this release as we lay the foundation for improved infrastructure as code support. This month, we're introducing support for GitHub repositories as feeds and first class Terraform support. And these unlock some incredible deployment automation and infrastructure automation scenarios. Let's get started. I have a local Octopus instance running, and you can see that I have a single project that we've seen in past videos called Random Quotes. You can also see we have three environments, dev, test, and production, and no deployments yet. If we head over to our infrastructure, we can see that there are three environments. We don't have any deployment targets yet. The thing I would like to highlight is our accounts. I'm using an Amazon Web Service account called Developer Playground. And so these were introduced recently. And just by adding your access key and your secret key, you can interact with Amazon Web Services safely and securely. The other thing that I'd like to highlight is our package repositories. I'm using two package repositories. The first is the Octopus built-in package repository. And you can see I have my random quotes web app here and it's version 1.0.0. But the thing that I wanna highlight is our new external feed. So you can see I have an external feed here called GitHub. We have added a new GitHub repository feed type. And if you take a look, I'm using anonymous authentication to connect to api.github.com. And so what that's doing is it gives me access to all of the public repositories. Alternately, if I specify my credentials, I can also connect to private repositories. So if I go to test, so here we can enter a package name, which can be any GitHub repository, including the owner name. So in this case, the repository we're gonna be working with in this video is called Terraform Tentacle, and it's owned by Octopus Samples. So if I just search for that, it shows me the matching package and the description. And in this case, is this all the information from GitHub itself? So now I'm gonna head over to our project, Random Quotes, and take a look at our deployment process. Our deployment process is quite straightforward. What we're trying to achieve is to deploy an ASP.NET Core web app to YIS. But the interesting thing is that we're going to provision the server and then automatically deploy to it once it becomes available. So if you recall, I don't have any deployment targets and I'm going to use Terraform. I'm going to apply a Terraform template to create that infrastructure for me. But to make this happen, I've done two additional things. The first is to create a deployment trigger. And so I've named that deploy to new servers. And if we take a quick look at this, I'm taking advantage of an event group. So when a machine becomes available for deployment, I'm going to automatically deploy to it. The second thing is that I had to tweak some project settings. So normally if you create a release and try to deploy it, but you don't have any deployment targets in the environment you're deploying to, Octopus won't let you do your deployment. So to be able to do that, what I need to do is I need to set my project to allow deployments to be created when there are no deployment targets. And the second thing I tweaked is to skip deployment targets if they are or become unavailable. Both of these settings are a part of Octopus's elastic and transient environment. That is, it works with machines that come and go. In this case, we're going to be deploying to a brand new machine that will appear. So when we first execute our deployment, there won't be any deployment targets. But once one becomes available, then we'll automatically deploy to it. Now let's head back to our deployment process. Our first step is to apply a Terraform template to provision a new server. And if we take a look at this step, you can see this step is executed on the Octopus server. And we specify our AWS account details. I also specify my AWS region. And now this is the most interesting part where we specify our template. I can specify that as source code directly within Octopus, but this time I'm specifying a file within a package. 
and quite often that would be uh, a build artifact. But with infrastructure as code, if I just check that into a repository, it's then accessible. So you can see here, I'm specifying my new GitHub package feed and I'm specifying the package ID, which is my Octopus Samples Terraform Tentacle Repository. So I will have my template and any configuration files within that repository and I can specify it. And there's no levels of indirection. It doesn't have to be built. I can refer to it directly. GitHub feeds are incredibly handy for scenarios like this, where build server or other intermediate infrastructure doesn't add much value. If you have Terraform templates, CloudFormation, or Azure's ARM templates, you can commit them directly to your source control repositories and utilize them quickly and easily. This is a huge step forward for infrastructure as code. I'd like to take a look at our Terraform template. So if we take a quick look here, you can see that it's not too long. And personally, I think the Terraform templates are a bit simpler than say, CloudFormation or Microsoft's Azure ARM templates. They provide a layer of abstraction on top of the cloud providers. At the top of my template, you can see that I specify a Terraform backend. And that's because Octopus does not maintain state in between releases. So if we use a backend, that's stored nicely. And you can see I'm just using an S3 bucket here. You can see the resource I'm creating is an AWS instance. And I have a few properties here that I'm specifying. The first is the AMI image, so the base image. In this case, it's a Windows Server 2016 base server. Then I specify some configuration details, instant type and some networking and disk details as well. So in this case, I'm specifying my VPC details and subnet. I've already created those in AWS and I'm just using them here. So there's a balance between what you configure in your template as well as your image. And this is one example. I'd also like to point out that I'm using variables here. So you can see I'm specifying them there and I have a tfvars file. So here I'm actually specifying octopus variable syntax. So at deployment time, Octopus will replace these variables and then they will cleanly get replaced into my Terraform template. The final thing I'd like to point out is that I am specifying a bootstrap file, which will be executed on my new target server. I have a script that will download and configure a new tentacle and even register it with my Octopus server. So this new server will be ready to be deployed to as soon as it's online. Now let's head back to Octopus. So if I go back to my deployment process, our second step is to deploy our website to IIS. And I'll take a quick look at it because it's very straightforward. This will be run on all of our web deployment targets. It's using our random quote package and it's just creating a standard IIS website. So I have my website details, application pool, bindings, etc. I do have JSON variable replacement turned on, so it will go ahead and update my app settings as well when I deploy. So now let's create a release and see everything in action. So I'm gonna go and create a release and I'll specify it as zero version 1.0.0. .0 .0. And if we take a look, we have two packages. The first is our Terraform Tentacle repository. And the latest tag in that repository is 1.0.0. And my second package is random quotes, which was built by my build server and pushed to the Octopus built-in package repository. So now that I've done that, I'll click save. Yes, I want to deploy to development. Take a quick look at the summary and I'll click deploy. So our deployment was successful. Terraform is provisioning our new server in AWS. Although our deployment was successful, nothing has been deployed until the server comes online and the tentacle registers itself with the Octopus server. At that point, our website will be deployed to the new server automatically. Now that we can see our new server has registered its tentacle with the Octopus server and it's now automatically deploying our web app to it. 
so our automatic deployment was successful. The first step wouldn't have made any changes because there weren't any, but the second one would have deployed our website to IIS. So if we jump over to our infrastructure, we take a look at our deployment targets. So now we can see our server's IP address. If I open a new window and enter that IP address and port 8081, which is the port I specified in my bindings, we can see that version 1.0.0 is running in development. And if we click refresh, we get some great random quotes. I'd like to summarize what we've seen today. We've automated the deployment of an ASP.NET Core web app, but we provisioned our infrastructure using Terraform. And our Terraform configuration was stored in a GitHub repository, allowing us to manage our infrastructure as code. This is a huge step forward for Octopus deployment and infrastructure automation. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below, including a link to start a free 45 day trial of Octopus Deploy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments.